This is Michael with Inspection Engineering, and I want to talk about uh, the new Shape Grabber series from OGP and Shape Grabber. And here I've got David O'Connor. David's been with Shape Grabber and OGP from the beginning. Um, over 20 years experience, if I remember right. That's right. And uh, you're really the go-to guy. If somebody calls up with a tech support question um, from a historical standpoint, you can help them with all the legacy product, and you know quite a bit about the new product. That's correct, yes. So what is different about the new Shape Gear AI series Shape Grabbers? So uh, the new series have really been redesigned from the ground up. So uh, this system we're looking at here is the AI320. We just launched it earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the platform itself, the scanner, it's a much more uh, rigid structure. You know, we've got a big stable metal base in there and, and a structural column that lets the scan head move up and down. As well, we've got high precision rotary table uh, and brand new line of scan heads to go with the new scanners. That's great. So there's new scan heads. What's different about this new line of scan heads? I remember the old scan heads, you had about three different models depending on part size and resolution and reflectivity. So how do these new heads compare to those? So uh, again, we've got three brand new scan heads, each to go with the three uh, Shape Grabber products in the 320, 620, and 820 series. Uh, what's new in the scan heads? Well, we've made many new improvements compared to the previous generation. Uh, we've moved over to the blue laser. It's actually 405 nanometers. It's tipping into the, the violet range, going okay. to a, a much narrower wavelength. So what's the advantage of having a, a violet wave range, <coughs> a violet color wave range um, on a laser? What's that do? So by going to the, uh, the narrower wavelength, it lets us scan a wider variety of materials. So uh, it especially helps when we're dealing with reflective parts. So uh, this tends to be much more robust when you look at other 3D scanners on the market. A lot of them will have trouble with you know, black materials or reflective surfaces, mm -hmm. and uh, our scanners do a good job of scanning those materials. So we're mess less much less likely to need scanning sprays, is what it sounds like. That's correct, yeah. I can't say we eliminate it altogether, but in many applications that would have required spray in the past, yeah. uh, you don't need it necessarily with this scanner. That's yeah. too bad, I like selling cans of spray. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, what are some applications you see people doing on this? I mean, are they, are they doing plastic molded parts? Are they doing castings? Are they doing bone screws, hip implants? Are they doing museum artifacts like King Tut's jewelry? I mean, what, what, what are people coming for? Really all those things. So uh, our, our niche tends to be more on the uh, inspection quality side of things. Okay. And uh, it, it excels at any production method that is uh, kind of inherently unpredictable. So injection molding, casting, forging, 3D printing, okay. you know, any of those uh, uh, production methods, there's, there's shrinkage, there's warpage, there's these things that happen that are really difficult to characterize with traditional tools. So when we use a scanner, we capture the entire surface and we can really see how it's in and out, warped and sh how it shrunk and all those details and characteristics. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, and it sounds like someone producing a part just has to stick the part in there, close it up, hit the play button, it does the scan, and if you've done it before, it does the full evaluation for you, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. It's, it's really a different approach compared to traditional measuring techniques, you know, whether it's a, a CMM or another device, you tend to go in and, and measure feature by feature. So uh, it's more of a laborious process, and it really only measures what you ask for, whereas sure. the scanner just goes ahead and captures points on anything that happens to be in front of it. So you're capturing all the geometry and you're measuring things that you might not have measured otherwise. So you get to see defects and, and, and characteristics that might not be captured by other tools. Okay. I think you mentioned earlier too, another addition to this is the scan head can tilt. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. So in this new line of uh, scanners, we have this optional uh, tilt mechanism, and that just gives us an extra view of the part. So uh, we're able to capture much more information in one given setup of the part. So you can get essentially better throughput and more information using that tilt axis. Great. Yeah. And that's automatic if you want, in like a CNC mode, so you can actually run it in a single scan without having the operator manually adjust it, is that correct? That's correct, it's motorized and you can scan in both what we call standard mode and tilt mode in one set of scans, so all the data is collected and, and all those positioning devices are very accurate, so the, the data comes in all in the right coordinate system relative to each other, so there's no post-processing to try and pull different scan passes together, it's already all together right out of the, right out of the scanner. Yeah. Very cool.
Um, software, we haven't talked about software. So what software platform is available or is recommended uh, with shape grabber systems these days? So with every system, we include uh, SG Central, that's the software to drive our scanner and collect the data and generate the, the scan files. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, there's some options just depending on your application. So uh, we work with, with Polyworks for, for a lot of inspection applications. We'll work with uh, Geomagic for modeling reverse engineering type applications. And we have our own in-house software for, for uh, really GD and T intensive applications when you want to evaluate uh, primarily GD and T callouts and make sure you're adhering to the standard. Okay. Which is smart profile. Correct. Right? OGP family product. Great. And um, you mentioned uh, the shape grabber software that drives the system that um, creates the file. What's that file output format? So we can output in a variety of formats to be compatible with these uh, application softwares. So we can output to Geomagic specific formats or uh, Polywork specific formats. And if we're working with our own Smart Profile software, we can actually kind of do it a direct export directly into Smart Profile without ever having to see the files or, or deal with them directly. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Um, appreciate your time with the system. and. Uh, Tune in, learn more about scanning products from inspection engineering. And uh, any questions about Shape Grabber, give us a call.